Welcome to Chai with Manju, with your host, Dr. Manju Shen. Hello and welcome to a very special Chai with Manju. Our guest today is the renowned professor Shrikant Dattar. He is the 11th dean of the most prestigious business school in the world, of course, the Harvard Business School. He's a brilliant educator who's loved by his students and community at large across the world. Let's meet Padmashri Shrikant Dattar. Dr. Dattar, I can't tell you what an incredible honor, a privilege, and a joy it is to have you with us today. Thank you so much for joining us. No, Manju, quite the opposite. Uh, <laughs> it's a privilege to be with you and to have this conversation. I know you've been planning this for a while and I'm yeah. happy that we're able to do this today. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. So. Uh, you're an incredible role model, uh, not just to your students, but to the community. And um, what amazes me is that people are so impressed with the way you give back. And I think a lot of these values were instilled in you in childhood, because I was reading that your professor dad always encouraged to give back the gift of knowledge. Your grandfather was a Padma Bhushan scientist. Mm -hmm. Your mother is a social worker who helps community at large so much. So tell us about those early years growing up in Mumbai in your family and how did it shape you into the person that you are today? Manju, I can't tell you how uh, uh, I am that you're asking this question because uh, uh, it's such an important part of my, has been such an important part of my life and continues to be because there are so many events that uh, uh, define us and uh, we are we become who we become because of uh, those things that happen and uh, i grew up in mumbai i'm from a very close knit family as you said uh, both grandfathers doctors my my maternal grandfather dr pandit uh, padmabhushan for amazing work that he did in uh, medical research he was the founding director of the indian council of medical research but i always remember that I did not choose my ancestors or my parents. I was just lucky to be born into my family and lucky to have had the influence that they had on me. So most of what you'll hear from me is uh, my good fortune in, uh, in many respects. But it's useful, I think, for people, uh, for me to share, because I'm very uh, happy to share that um, uh, about my experience uh, uh, growing up. And my father was a freedom fighter in the Indian independence movement before he founded the Nautical and Engineering College and uh, uh, very heavily influenced by Mahatma Gandhi. So we grew up in a household where uh, Gandhiji's values were uh, very deeply instilled in us. And uh, he founded the college because India had no um, uh, place where uh, students could be trained for the Indian Merchant Navy. And so he wanted to uh, do that. Uh, after after independence and um, that's what he uh, did what i remember most about growing up at that time uh, manju is the emphasis in our home on doing the right thing uh, i would see my parents uh, act in this way i would often see the cost of acting with integrity that they experienced and uh, those are lessons that have uh, uh, stayed with us throughout our lives. And so my brother Gautam and I were always taught to be disciplined and to always act with um, uh, courage and integrity. You know, little stories are always uh, helpful in these cases. So I want to tell you a story I love to tell. I've told this many times, uh, but I love to tell it because it's such an, uh, such an important part of growing up. I must have been about uh, 12 or 13 years old, I went to an amazing school, Cathedral and John Connon School. My parents sacrificed a great deal for us to go to that school um, uh, in Mumbai. And we had birthday parties. And so uh, one of these birthday parties was at the race course and my friend invited me uh, to it. I, we came from, as you can imagine, uh, from what you described, um, you know, comfortable middle class family, but not nothing, not, not wealth wasn't something that... Uh, uh, that we had. Um, but a lot of my friends were going to be betting at the race course. We were told if you wanted to bet, bring your own money. And so I went to my dad and said, give me a little bit of money. You know, I, not a large amount. I understand we don't have much, but, uh, you know, just a little bit, just for fun. You know, I just want to join in the fun. 
and uh, my friends were doing that and it would be fun to do it with them um he very quickly manju i can still remember where i was sitting where he was sitting to this day many many decades later very quickly and firmly said absolutely not no way uh i then told him as a little 12 year old would that uh, you know i then won't go to the party because it will be too embarrassing for me to go without any money everyone else is coming and you're not even giving me i'm not even asking you for much it's just a little bit and you're saying no and he said look i'm going to tell you why i'm saying no and um it's not because i'm worried that you would lose the money that if in fact i was if i was sure that would happen i would give it to you in a heartbeat my worry is that you would win and learn from it an unfortunate lesson and as for not going he said you should just think about why i'm saying no try to understand my logic and reasons and i would advise you to go enjoy the party because there will be many times in your life where might you might be the only one who has to take a particular stand but if that is the right thing to do uh, don't just do what others are doing but uh, do what you think is right i absolutely revered my father uh, didn't take me long to know that his thinking was wise and i did go to the party had a great time you asked about my mother she was a social worker i would say what i learned most from her was about uh, poverty and about the role that we have when you asked about giving back to others and the role that we have uh, to do what we can to those who are much more unfortunate than uh, and privileged than we are uh, and i'll tell you another little story because they always i think uh, bring home the values that we were taught which is uh, she was a Uh, elected member of the pune municipal corporation as a corporator you get certain amount of money to allocate to your constituency and she had two big zopat parties in her constituency one of which was right uh, you know close to bigger one and uh, women had to go out into the uh, general area to get water every day and she felt that that was such a unfair thing that they should get water in their own homes so she used the resources that she was given to uh, get a water tap connected to each home rather than go outside to get water every morning or whenever you needed water to drink uh, got a tap fitted in the home mm-hmm. so she passed away in 2005 and um, thousands came to pay their last respects she had done so much for so many people uh, what surprised me were that many children came and i asked them you know this is not a common thing for you to come to an event like this it's a sad event and so why are you coming <laughs> they told me that their mothers had sent them because often they came without their mothers they came with some other mother but not with their own mother they were coming in groups and they would sit around my mother's body where i had just kept it before the funeral uh, we would uh, for a before a cremation and stare at her face and um i asked them you know why are you after a little while i asked them why are you doing this what is uh, what's the reason and they said that uh, their mothers had asked them to really study my mother's face so that every time they turned on the tap every morning and they thanked my mother this was the last occasion they would have to actually know who this person was and what her face looked like before she was cremated so my mother imbued in us that a life well lived is measured not by what one does for oneself but what one does for others uh they both made countless sacrifices i can't even tell you all the sacrifices they made so my brother and i could go to the very best schools and colleges i absolutely would not be who i am were it not for them <laughs> and so i want to say in in real tribute to them that uh Uh, you know whenever i see my name card in front of my name when i'm uh, you know in an event behind it i'm always thinking is their names and their values uh, not just mine uh, so i'm deeply deeply grateful to my family pure luck as i said that i was where i was born and very aware of the values and what they have taught me and very aware that uh, uh it's a high bar that they have set this is amazing it's very inspiring i must say that so that takes me to the next phase of your journey that i was reading about when you were uh, preparing for your chartered accountancy exams you happened to 
uh, by chance see an ad for uh, Indian Institute of Management in Ahmedabad. Yep. I read that your dad wasn't that time too excited about I, uh, administrative or IFS. I have said so, but you were um, you wanted to try that. Those were the last days to apply. I know those days physically we had to go and get the forms, and you convinced a cousin to get the form for you. That it was the uh, university was closed, but a clerk found that form. I'm thinking, did the clerk know that he was part in making the history as well? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure at that time, uh, no, uh, Manju, but. Uh... But look at that. Look at the role that luck played yes. in the whole set of events. Right? The whole life would have right. been but for that one event that occurred. And uh, this is why I always say, you know, we must stay extremely humble because, uh, uh, you know, God is great and uh, gives us opportunities. But uh, I believe he does so so that uh, we can contribute to others. But you're absolutely right that that uh, clerk uh, on a day the institute was closed happened to give the form right. to my cousin who happened to send it to me. I happened to get it in on time and then, of course, got uh, admitted to IIM Ahmedabad. But uh, what a, I still remember that story with great uh, thing about and completely. By the way, I do I did know that person after I went to Ahmedabad. I always uh, kept a very uh, because I knew who who it was and. Uh, Thanked him many, many times for uh, me being there. <laughs> this little act of kindness and the results that they, you know, bring to us. I yeah. was thinking about that. Yeah. yeah. And I think this idea of paying it forward, Manju, is very important. Do you have any special memories of um, IIM that you want to share with us? I mean, such a transformative experience, uh, Manju, uh, really, really was. And of course, you know, you know the... Uh, educational system we came from uh, before and then to go into I am Ahmedabad with amazing, amazing, amazing uh, student uh, uh, who were with you at the time. You know, you only know one year before and one year below and then your own class. And uh, I actually attribute a lot of my learning to them because it was through the case method. Uh, it was uh, a tremendous amount of preparation and participation, as you know, founded with the help of Harvard Business School. <laughs> Uh, the idea about listening actively to another point of view that you thoroughly disagree with, but still always wanting to listen, uh, taking a stand after you 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 uh, listened, uh, deliberating, discussing, debating. Um, it really teaches you to learn how to learn and how do you uh, engage people in order to refine your judgment and. Uh, it's such a life skill and one that I uh, still apply to this day in my work. So, uh, again, another lucky break to get to Ahmedabad and another uh, lucky set of opportunities to learn in a way that is so invaluable. Yeah, I remember reading one of your interviews that it was like a lottery. And then they were, uh, some of the, your fellow colleagues and students were interviewed and uh, they were sharing their memories about you. And some of the fun memories was you did a lot of yoga, you ate a lot of omelets, and you played <laughs> this. <laughs> I did all of that, and uh, I did all of that. But what an amazing group of individuals! I'm still in touch with them. Uh, I yeah. well, I owe a lot to them from what I learned from them, uh, both in terms of their brilliance as well as their values. So, uh, very very fortunate to be at Ahmedabad. Right, right. So. Um, you know, your journey at every step of the way is, you know, personifies excellence, really. You graduated with gold medal from one of the, the best institute in India, IIM. Then you were the first Indian who was accepted in Stanford doctoral yeah. program directly from India. So again, you made history there. Yeah. Then, of course, Carnegie Mellon, Stanford, and then you become the 11th dean of which I said the best business school in the world, the Harvard Business School. And I was looking at um, and actually watching the commencement speech that you gave this year. Yeah. And what impressed me the most was that right in the beginning, you told your students that look around you and thank those who've had your back, yeah. made you who you are. And this is the first time I heard that and it was so touching. So I want to hear about who are those? I know you talked about your parents. Who are the others? Who were your mentors who always had your back 
and helped you get to where you are today. Uh, uh, again, thank you, Manju. All of these are <laughs> such important questions because uh, it's uh, you always must appreciate that whatever we have achieved, you're saying all these uh, things is not because of me. It's because of all the people who have helped you get there and you always reflect on those individuals. I do that uh, I do that very often, as I as I described earlier. Uh, so I, I'll just do a few uh, few of those individuals. You know, I, I uh, uh, first I would start with uh, uh, Professor Bhattacharya, who was a professor at IIM Ahmedabad, and uh, uh, I asked him whether he would write a recommendation for me when I applied to Stanford, and he said he would, and uh, he did. Uh, and then after uh, I got in, uh, I learned that uh, what he had written. I have no idea whether that alone was the reason. I have other stories where I can never tell whether that alone was the reason, but I'm sure a, a very big reason. Uh, he had a beautiful flair of writing these things. And uh, uh, yeah, so he wrote in the, uh, uh, in the recommendation letter that this individual you should take into your program. And I'm going to tell you why you should take him into the program. And he said, I don't know what Srikant Datar will lose if he is not admitted to the program. I just don't know the answer to that question. But I do know that whatever he would lose, Stanford would lose more if the school did not admit him. Wow. Obviously not true, Manju. Obviously not true. <laughs> but a, but yeah. an interesting way to phrase a recommendation to yeah. uh, just suggest that, um, uh, you know, there might be uh, something that, this person might bring to you, which is always what we look for when we are trying to uh, bring candidates to the school. We always believe that those who we bring enrich the school a lot, you know, even in our classroom. So I'm always reminded of that, even as we think about who we admit now uh, because of the way they enrich the class. And that's what he was trying to, I think, basically say. Uh, I was fin fantastic mentors. Uh, Joel Dembski, my thesis advisor, um, Bob Wilson, who won the Nobel Prize in Economics in uh, 2020 and whom we honored as a graduate of the school with the Alumni Achievement Award my first year as dean and uh, Professor Wolfson, Bob Kaplan, who has been a major uh, source of both inspiration and uh, guidance and mentor here at uh, Harvard Business School. He was formerly at uh, Carnegie Mellon. Um, and so for sure, as you look at every, and then I can go to so many people in industry, uh, uh, Dan Bazella, uh, who was well, the first time I went on a board at, uh, at the Novartis board and uh, uh, how, how much I learned from him and all the individuals, all my colleagues on the boards from whom I learned from so much. So too many to name, but uh, uh, a very large number for sure. Uh, and I always say I would not be Dean, uh, but for all the individuals starting that you've so kindly allowed me to acknowledge and recognize who made uh, me the person I am. And so most of it I attribute to, you know, God's grace and great luck. You know, when somebody is so successful, then you want to know what can I learn from that person and maybe get some of those qualities to rub off on me. So I always, <laughs> so I remember this year, I tried to go to the uh, Harvard India conference every year. And um, while I was there this time also, the excitement amongst the students before you were gonna get there. And once you get there, you know, once you come there, everybody's surrounding you, everybody wants a word with you. And, you know, the way uh, they get excited, they, the way they, the, your approachability is, where you listen to them. And I know, of course, you did the listening tour as soon as you became the dean and listened to 1,000 people that digitalized. You know, you, you're a great listener. And uh, the students, of course, said that you have the most photographic memory. <laughs> Somebody even said that he will even remember the first time you said something in class. <laughs> <laughs> I met many professors at Harvard Business School living in Boston. You have seven friends, but your approachability, your dynamism is very appreciated by all. What are the qualities you think you have that or the habits? It can be said, you know, habits are a big part of our success yeah. that you think help you succeed. And probably some people could learn from that, including me. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure about that, Manju, at all. But uh, um, 
you know, I would say, uh, I, 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 I'll go before success, uh, Manju, to say that things that make me happy, because I think if you do things that make you happy, you, uh, you, whether or not you get success, you know, very much in, uh, in a philosophical way, you don't look for success, and that's the last thing you should look for, but, uh, uh, you know, doing things that are are right doing things that are your duty things that make you happy so i'll i'll i'll, I'll respond in that way mm-hmm. um i think the first is to stay humble um you know we yeah. must always believe that every interaction you have you grow and learn you will learn from others uh uh, and and you want and I'm very much learning from you as we are having this conversation so I'm always looking to uh, see if, what I can learn second is there is no bigger joy and you would obviously see this from the background that you just described in developing and mentoring people around me to be the best that they can be so whether it was as a professor before I became dean whether I'm now as dean uh, uh, I, I really value developing people so they can be the best and through them they can change the world. And so if you ask me in that line, what I'm most mm-hmm. proud of, uh, it's that two of my doctoral students became deans of top business schools in, yeah, in nice. the United States. Yeah, mm-hmm. Three of them are tenured professors at Harvard Business School. So three of my doctoral students whose committees I chaired are, are tenured professors at Harvard Business School. You know, one of my MBA students, Stefan Bunsel, is the CEO of Moderna, the company that developed the COVID vaccine in record time. So developing people and mentoring them. And uh, I've had, a, a fortunately, been in touch with these individuals that I've described over many, many, many years. And um, uh, uh, that's something that gives me great joy. And uh, then it leads to some success, if, hopefully, but uh, more joy. Uh Try to always think, as you were asking me earlier, coming from very early in my childhood, to leave the world in a better place than we found it. Uh, Try and give purpose and meaning to our lives and those of others as much as we can. Uh, uh, I love to quote from the tennis great uh, Arthur Ashe. Uh, I'll I'll go to the US Open. You probably might remember if you've gone there, see the statue of uh, uh, Arthur Ashe and then this quote, which... uh, uh, reads from uh, what you get, you make a living. What you give, however, makes a life. Yeah. And it's that thing about, you know, leaving the world better, contributing in some way. And then at the very basic and core, I uh, don't even need to mention it, but important is always act with integrity. Uh, as I said, I saw my parents do that at cost. and But uh, may be difficult to do it in the short run because you can think of trade-offs always, always, always the right thing to do uh, in the long run and uh, and with empathy. So feel for those who don't have uh, what you have and uh, uh, try and touch and inspire others as much as you can. So I would say those are things I've tried to do. I don't think I'm anywhere close to. I'm still improving, <laughs> still learning. First point, uh, continue to grow and learn. But uh, at least these are things that I try to do. Let me put it that way. So I have to ask you a very important question, which I think a lot of people would want an answer because I feel everybody wants to go to Harvard Business School. If I was younger, I would be knocking on the door myself. (laughs) 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 My daughter will listen with bated breath. (laughs) Hard to get into Harvard Business School. I was looking at year 2000. I think you had over 9,000 applicants and out of that 800, some were offered. So basically looking at a... 9% 9% um, acceptance rate. So what kind of students are you looking for to join Harvard Business School? What's an ideal student? Yeah, yeah. you know, I often, uh, say to people, uh, I often say to people, Manju, that you only see those that come. You, I've, you get a chance uh, as dean to see those who were unfortunately not admitted. And I always, I always <laughs> ask myself the question whether... Uh, you know, I would be admitted at this point in time. It is so amazing, the students that we get. So what do we look for? Uh, uh, it's, uh, I think, identifying individuals who want to lead and make a difference in the world. You know, at the end of the day, that's what the mission of the business school is. If you can get people who are already thinking along those lines and then move them further in their journey, you're always uh, a better off. So what does, uh, you know, we uh, we just welcome the the class uh, of 2025 uh, earlier this week and 
uh, the chair of the MBA program, uh, Matt Weinsville, has this has phrased this so beautifully when he says that uh, what we are about is hard work with humility for humanity. That's uh, that's, that's what that's what Harvard Business School tries to develop, and so that's the kind of individuals you try to find those who will work hard with humility to make a difference in the world. Uh, so what does that mean, uh, Manju? It means academic excellence is very important. Uh, so you clearly need to have that. Uh, but also leadership ability, drive, empathy, the ability to uh, uh, lead teams. Um, and so then as you think about the case-based ped pedagogy where students are learning from each other, having this kind of uh, a diverse group of students with diverse experiences and cultures represented in the class adds to the learning. And then as we wrote about in our book in uh, 2010 on rethinking the MBA, uh, how do you develop these critical thinking skills? Because, you know, there's not a fixed body of now. every problem that a manager is going to face is going to be different. How do you critically think through it? Uh, how would you think innovatively? How do you think integratively? Uh, and then we added these two other uh, uh, elements called doing skills and being skills, which we also try to look for in our uh, students, which is, uh, you know, knowing everything is good enough, but it's uh, is good, but it's not good enough because, Unless you apply what you know and do something with it, it's no good. And then being became important because as a manager, it's unlike, uh, you know, your profession as a, as a doctor or a lawyer or others where it's a little more you and your patient and client. Managers are always about uh, leading through others. And so being skills, the impact that you have on others, how do you treat others with respect so they can deliver for you? Uh, become important skills. So these are the kinds of things we look for uh, when we're trying to recruit the class. Okay. So uh, when I had first met you a couple of years ago and we had wanted to do the interview and you had said, let's wait a few years. So okay. now that it's been a few years, I'm going to ask you, what do you think have been your, what, what have been the three biggest achievements that you think you've had since you became dean, right in the middle of pandemic on January 1st, 2021? Um, I, I, so I, <laughs> I think I think of the, I, I can now say reflecting back and, and, and mind you, I would have even waited uh, much longer because these are just <laughs> things that we have started now. So a lot more work to be done. Uh, but I think I, I viewed the pandemic as the gateway to Harvard Business School's future. And what I mean by that is uh, the ability, uh, we did, uh, I, I'll just summarize it in three or four things like you asked. Uh, first was the idea that um, we ought to, in certain areas, and this came from the listening tour, we ought mm -hmm. to uh, uh, increase the collaboration that we have uh, in, in thought leadership in important areas. So, one, we created a new institute. We've never had institutes at Harvard Business School before. Uh, we created a new institute called Digital Data and Design Institute at Harvard called D-Cubed, which is saying that technology is moving fast. This is before chat GPT. And by the way, this institute is already helping us develop large language models that we will use as tutors in our classes, even as early as this year. But how, and we didn't know, but we could see quantum coming. We could see AI and, uh, you know, machine learning continuing to accelerate. Obviously, the change to digital, but also design that is keeping in mind what are the challenges in the world that we're going with in technology. So how do we think about people and technology both at the, uh, at the same time? I often refer to that uh, again, uh, going back to very early days, Gandhiji's uh, idea that science without humanity is one of his seven deadly sins, as you know, as is commerce without morality and knowledge without character. So, you know, always trying to keep those uh, things in our mind as we're trying to move things forward. So we created that. new, And we also thought that, you know, there are so many interesting problems that the world is facing now that uh, that business can play a role. So we created a second institute for thought leadership Institute for the Study of Business in Global Society, where we are trying to address problems such as uh, climate change, uh, but thinking about it in a very different way, not just only climate, not just only economics, uh, but how do you think about economic policy, energy policy, and climate policy all as one uh, area of, uh, uh, of work? 
how do you think about entrepreneurial solutions to the world's problems how do you think about building resilient and sustainable uh, uh, businesses uh, uh, here so uh, two new institutes to try and generate uh, thought leadership then we have engaged in a very significant digital transformation of the school uh, to achieve two things one is lifelong learning for our alumni so i did 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 mention to the incoming mba students this week that what you've been admitted to when you come to harvard business school or our ambition as we are going forward still to be done is not just you're admitted to two years in the mba program but with using digital technologies machine learning and ai can we engage with you in lifelong learning throughout your career so as the world changes problems change what you need to learn how do we engage with you and that requires everything to be done digitally using machine learning and ai and so we're involved in we appointed our first chief data officer at the school and we're involved in doing that um and then we're creating a new learning platform uh, manju where it's called the lxp this is uh, uh, with the university and the vice provost for advances in learning bharat anand around uh, how do we uh expand the reach of harvard business school uh, harvard university starting with harvard business school as the first uh, uh, test case for this so that individuals who will never step foot on the harvard business school campus should have access to the knowledge that we create because if our mission is to educate leaders who make a difference in the world how do we reach uh, them in the mba program we made a lot of changes in and and i won't get into many of the details around how do you innovate in the mba program both in the required curriculum and the elective curriculum i will mention that for the very first time this year students will have a required course in data science and machine learning at the school and then we did a lot to improve mba affordability in 2022 we announced that and we very uh, it's a very important uh, step we took that the lowest 10% socio economically will go tuition free to harvard business school for both years uh -huh. so and and we did that manju because of this this firm belief that talent in the world is much more evenly distributed than opportunity and resources it should never be the case that someone who doesn't have money uh, to come to harvard business school uh, cannot come and so um, so those are some of the things that we've been working on these last two years sounding <laughs> I think in some ways covid actually accelerated growth right. for those who were inclined in those directions isn't uh, it right. so, correct correct very much sorry we've taken a long time otherwise manju to get there so covid certainly helped absolutely and you emphasize a lot on leadership so let me ask you you do a lot of good things a lot of serious things and i'm sure they are fun but what do you do for just total fun with no intentions i know your mom was a tennis player you love to play tennis i saw you at the koshiki uh, event with sharesh so i know you like classical music what else do you like to do for fun uh, i think you got uh, you got you got the manju i was i'm amazed as to how much uh, you already you already know here yeah, but uh, um you know obviously sports and so tennis swimming and skiing are th activities i do quite regularly uh, through the year uh, you know uh, skiing of course in the winter period but uh, i love uh, uh, sport i love watching sports too i'm uh, uh, i grew up uh, playing a little bit of competitive tennis as a kid my mother was a wonderful tennis player so we got a, a chance to uh, uh, you know always partake in that uh, uh, beautiful sport um, I love traveling uh, whenever I get a chance it's an opportunity to again learn and grow so you you do that listening to music uh, uh, as you said classical <laughs> well as old hindi songs are also a, a big uh, favorite of uh, favorite and uh, and then you know whenever uh, uh, when I, obviously at at different points of time uh, reading uh, just to just to relax and, uh, uh, and and learn so i i think across a uh, range of activities just to uh, uh just to sort of uh, uh, have fun but i also think on the other side uh, manju uh, the things that um, uh, i've uh, benefited from i think outside this uh, work environment is uh, is meditation i think my father taught me that for a long time when i was a little uh, uh, boy and i've always uh, practiced it for many many years and so i i do find that relaxing as well so different kind of relaxation may not be i don't know i, I don't know if i'd call it fun necessarily but relaxation 
Okay. Tell us a little bit about your family. I had a good fortune to meet your wife, Swati, and you have three children, right? Yeah, so Swati is the one I'll talk uh, <laughs> about, uh, just completely the rock of the family, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as of course um, uh, is the person that makes everything uh, uh, be what it is and all the joy and happiness uh, that we experience because these are not separate things. You know, what you enjoy, at, your joy at work comes from a lot of joy at home and uh, a very, as you met her, you'll know, very unassuming and humble, extremely empathetic and very, very compassionate and welcoming, caring, uh, authentic. Uh, you know, I can't say enough about her. I am obviously biased. But I can say that, uh, again, and talking about uh, being lucky and people who have uh, helped me, uh, extremely kind, generous and thoughtful. And Radhika and Gayatri and Sadat, our children, also proud of her. Uh, who they are and uh, uh, what they do and uh, you know it's it's always uh, these are always uh, you know parts of this in some sense it feels like a different experience but they're not they're very intertwined and uh, uh, each gives you uh, joy and energy in doing the other and uh, I think if it was unbalanced in in that way it would be uh, uh, now, my former dean would always say, uh, and I always appreciated that comment, uh, uh, Dean Clark, that uh, uh, in his commencement speech is that no amount of success at work is worth failure at home. So uh, it's a good thing to remember. <laughs> you have so many interesting stories in your life. I have to ask you, how did you meet her? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I, uh, it's a great question and uh, our parents knew each other. So we were introduced uh, by them and uh, uh, the, I, I didn't meet her in any other, uh, you know, normal uh, uh, work environment. But uh, I'm again, very fortunate that that happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that sounds good. Now, tell me, what is next for Shikandatar? Oh, <laughs> uh, hard question. I, I still have, uh, uh, you know, the next few years here to uh, continue on the work and, um, uh, uh, you know, work at the school and uh, completely uh, devoted to the school that I absolutely love and uh, I want to do as much as I can uh, for it. Again, trying to, uh, I, as I said, uh, when I was named Dean, uh, that um, the debt I owe to Harvard is so much bigger than the than uh, uh, what I can what I can ever do for it. But uh, whatever little I can do in my role as dean, at least it uh, pays back some of that <laughs> debt that, <laughs> that, that, that I have. But uh, uh, so at at the moment it's uh, it's there, and I think it'll be you know focused. Uh, one of the great privileges of this uh, role is the opportunity to. Uh, have an impact in different ways and uh, I'm uh, looking forward to uh, having that impact uh, as we you know continue on this uh, continue on this journey so um, it's been it's been fun and uh, I've certainly appreciated uh, the 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 you know the opportunity to do what it is and it is for sure Manju, an extremely humbling experience, that's for sure. <laughs> I tell you, you know, as a community, we are so incredibly proud of you. Just by doing what you do with so much kindness and humbleness, you know, you make us all believe that we should never, never stop dreaming. You know, you bring us hope and optimism. So I thank you for that. And thank you so much for coming on the show as well. Thank oh, you. My great pleasure, uh, Manju. You are, of course, doing an amazing service to a lot of people by Thank what you. Uh, you do both in your work. And I don't know how you find time to do what you're doing now, but uh, it's amazing that you it's are. Happiness. <laughs> <You said what? laughs> That's for sure. That's for sure. None of us can do it without that. But uh, uh, I'm uh, grateful to have had the opportunity to spend some time with you this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah.